Good morning and welcome to The Mint. I'm Andy Hodges, live from ZTN Studios here in Harare, Zimbabwe. Today's main story, Zimbabweans appear to be drinking less beer. That's according to Delta's quarter, quarter one results. Find out more and more stories here on The Mint. We'll be right back. Right, and we start, of course, with the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange. And yesterday, there was only one stock to talk about, and that was Insco. Now, Insco was really the highlight of the trading session. They traded a total of 4.24 million shares in a block trade. And, of course, volume surged 30.1% yesterday to around 5.33 million, with a value outturn ballooned 99% to 10.43 million. 16 counters registers price movement movement in line with uh, the market. Of course, it was distributed amongst nine gainers and seven fallers, leaving the market in a positive situation. The top gainer of the day was TSL, that was put on 20% to settle at 0 0.60 cents, um, and that trailed by insurer First Mutual Life. Uh, Mikkels was up 12.83% um, to close and the wrap up at 1.2411 cents post-release of their full financial results that are coming out soon. Um, Star Africa also improved 11.1% up. Now, on the downside, uh, Cassava was down, Seedco down, uh, ZB was also down. Um, and in fact, uh, pretty much the market ended up flat at the end of the day. So we're going to keep an eye on Zimbabwe Stock Exchange for you, as we always do here on The Mint every day. And as I always say to you, please, your comments keep coming in on our Facebook page, Zim Papers TV Network, and also on our website, ztn.co.zw. And of course, today, we've got two exciting shows for you on ZTN. We've got 1 o'clock, we've got Heartbeat, which is our health show, and of course, 6.30, don't miss the chase. We're talking about corruption and fiscal discipline. Has Zimbabwe done enough? Anyway, please don't miss the chase at 6.30 tonight. Now then. Whirlpool is pulling out of South Africa. Appliance maker Whirlpool, which is responsible for Indesit, Ariston and KIC brands in South Africa, has been sold. On Tuesday, the local operation confirmed an agreement had been entered into at the end of June and said it expects the sale to close in the third quarter after its parent company warned shareholders how much its exit from South Africa will cost. In reporting its second quarter financial results, the New York-listed Whirlpool Corporation said Selling its South African operations would come with a $35 million write down of assets and 33 million cumulative foreign currency translation adjustments. Listen to this number. The total cost of Whirlpool selling its subsidiary in South Africa comes out to a whopping 950 million rand. My goodness, the parent company provided no further deals on the transaction. However, a regulatory authority signing with the Competition Authority of Botswana said some, some two weeks ago provides a bit more details. Describes the transaction in which the newly formed South African company KICSA will buy assets from Whirlpool South Africa. According to the filing, KC, KICSA will ultimately be controlled by Stefan Egli, who wholly owns ABAG. GMO GmbH, a Swiss company involved in the business of developing, owning, and leasing residential property. U.S. markets, as you know, it's, 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 it's earnings season right now, and of course, the big boys are coming now out with their earnings. Boeing, for example, Boeing shares dropped more than 1% in the pre-market before pairing losses after the aerospace giant posted a massive loss for the previous quarter. Caterpillar also slid 3% after the company reported weaker than expected earnings. Don't forget Boeing's problem, of course, is the 737 MAX. And in fact, if these losses continue, the company says that they may have to cease production of that plane. Nearly a quarter of S&P 500 companies have reported second quarter earnings so far. And of these, 79% have reported better than expected earnings. Wall Street also kept a close eye on tech stocks as companies in the sector face mounting regulatory pressure. Facebook, Amazon and Alphabet all traded lower after the Justice Department announced a broad antitrust review of big tech companies. Trouble ahead for tech companies, particularly to do with 
privacy. In fact, we will be reporting tomorrow morning on Facebook's numbers and their appointment of a privacy guru to make sure that our privacy is not, is not abused <clears throat> like it has been in the past. Bloomberg News initially reported that in-person talks between <laughs> China and the U.S. will start Monday as U.S. negotiators headed to China. The U.S. delegation will be led by Trade Representative Robert Leitiger, and he will be in China through Wednesday next week. That's according to the report. European markets slipped into negative territory Wednesday morning as market participants digested a fresh round of corporate earnings while bracing for a dovish outcome from the European Central Bank's meeting that is going to be held later today. Market focus is largely attuned to global central banks amid expectations that the ECB and the Federal Reserve could soon cut interest rates. The ECB is seen <coughs> cutting rates by 10 basis points on Thursday, that's today, with the U.S. Central Bank expected to lower rates by 25 basis points at the end of the month. A prospect of, uh, of stimulus across the global economy is real and in fact it's there to soften the impact um, of, of pressures and particularly now the IMF has downgraded its global growth forecasts. The IMF has said that the global economy will expand 3.2% in 2019, down 0.1% from its previous forecast. And that's really around the problems with the U.S.-China trade war, Brexit, and also muted inflation rates. On the data front, Purchasing Managers, managers Index PMI data showed that the recession in Germany's manufacturing sector worsened in July. Looking at some earnings for you, Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank reported weaker than expected net loss of 3.15 billion euros. Remember, we reported here on the Mint that Deutsche Bank is restructuring and could lose up to 20,000 jobs worldwide and also selling its investment bank arm. Deutsche Bank shares 3.7% yesterday. French, maker, French car maker Peugeot delivered a sharp increase in first half profits as new models and integration of the Opel Vauxhall more than made up for weaker emerging market sales. Daimler Benz. Daimler said it will intensify co cost cuts after legal risks for diesel related issues and the cost of replacing Takata airbags triggered a 1.56 billion euros loss before interest and taxes in the second quarter. Daimler shares, however, did recover their early losses to trade 1.7 percent higher. Obviously, Daimler still has incredible value in terms of the cars and it's in its, its stable of cars that it sells around the world, particularly here in Africa. I'm sure a lot of you drive Mercedes Benzes. Gives you an idea. Now then, ITV shares. ITV, of course, is the large TV channel in the UK. It surged 7.2 percent after Britain's biggest free-to-air commercial broadcaster so a strong contract contribution to online, re online revenue from a reality show that I'm sure a lot of you like, Love Island, helped limit a fall in ad revenue to 5% for the first half of the year. Asia Pacific. Stocks in Asia Pacific were mostly higher on Wednesday following developments on the U.S.-China front. Mainland, sh mainland Chinese shares rose on the day, the Shanghai Composite adding 0.8% to 2.9, 2, 2, <coughs> and Shenzhen component gaining 0.99%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index added 0.42% as well. In its final hour, shares of Cometics trader Lucky Tain jumped more than 5% with Nomura upgrading the stock to a buy. Shares of Apple LG Display, uh, supply LG Display also dropped 3.81% after the firm reports a larger than expected second quarter earnings. The company also said it's looking to diversify its supplier base amid, amid the ongoing diplomatic spat between Tokyo and Seoul at South Korea. Let's have a quick look for you at African currencies. One of the major issues that happened yesterday, of course, the Reserve Bank issued an exchange control circular to buttress SI 142 that was issued on the 24th of June. Tomorrow morning on the Mint, we're going to have a look at that exchange control circular and try and unpack it in simple terms. But just to give you an idea, it gives crow manufacturers, small-scale crow miners, some foreign exchange retention, and also it puts new rules on Bureau de Changes and how they can deal with remittances from NGOs and non-governmental organizations and, of course, multinational organizations. So we're going to look at that tomorrow.
tomorrow on the Mint, so please don't miss it. And have a look at our webpage, of course, at tn.co.zw and our Facebook page, Zim Papers TV Network. U.S. dollar, the U.S. dollar was flat against the basket of currencies at 97.704, having edged up to a five-week high of 97.76 earlier, following gains of nearly 0.5% the previous day. The euro fell to a two-month low against the dollar on Wednesday, hit by weak economic data <clears throat> and speculation that the European Central Bank may open the door to aggressive monetary policy easing as soon as today. Mark money market prices uh, put in 54% chance, as money market traders, apologies, put in 54% chance of a 10 basis point hike today. However, the market may anticipate higher, higher, higher cuts, and that will probably be effective in September 2019. The possibility arose after the Eurozone's purchasing managers index PMI unexpectedly fell to a three month low of 51.5 from 52.2. Uh, economists polled by Reuters had expected a slight decline to 52.1. Decline to if that number goes below 50, that separates economic growth from contraction. Under 50 means that the economies are contracting. The common currency was down 0.1% to 1.1137. Now, markets are betting on the ECB later on today, easing and have lifted the Swiss franc, which traded at 1.0980 francs per euro, not far, far from the high of 1.0972, which was reached last Tuesday. The surging franc is heaping pressure on Swiss officials to act to protect their export-heavy economy. The euro has shed almost 2% value this month as investors price in the possibility of a eurozone borrowing costs falling deeper into negative territory. A broadly stronger dollar has also contributed to the single currency's woes. Have a quick look at commodities around the world. Interesting thing about African currencies, of course, we've just had word that the finance minister in Kenya was arrested for corruption. We're going to try and get more on that story and give it to you tomorrow morning in the Mint. Now, gold prices rose on Wednesday as escalating tensions in the Middle East drove investors towards the safe haven metal, while reports of progress in Sino-U.S. trade negotiations and a stronger dollar limited the metal's gains. Spot gold was up 0.3 percent at 1421.16 per ounce. Among other precious metals, silver rose 0.5 percent, palladium eased 0.2 percent, and, uh, and that, that palladium, in fact, that platinum was up 0.7 percent after hitting its highest since May the 14th at 862.25. It actually closed at 859.75 yesterday. Oil prices nudged higher on Wednesday, supported by a sharp fall in U.S. crude stocks and, of course, the continuing tensions with Iran. U.S. crude stocks fell more than expected in the week to July 19th, declining by 11 million barrels to 449 million barrels, uh, the trade group American Petroleum Institute said on Tuesday. That compared with anal analyst expectations for a decrease of 4 million barrels. Well, that's it for In the Market today. And in our second segment in, sorry, in the economy today, <laughs> in the economy, we're looking at Delta Beverages. Why are Zimbabweans drinking less beer? That's our main story. And we have Ndaka Majaka here in the studio to unpack it for us. Don't go away. The Mint will be right back. On the Mint, you can't at least not have a laugh. And we thought that we would show you this graphic to have a look at what we call entrepreneurs versus entrepreneurs. And of course, uh, a entrepreneur has an idea but takes no action. 
An entrepreneur has an idea, he plans for it, he takes massive actions, he faces the problems and he attempts to solve them. He may fail, or he or she may fail, apologies, they'll keep trying, they'll solve the problem, they'll increase what they do and of course eventually they'll be successful. Entrepreneur, entrepreneur, what are you? I'm an entrepreneur, what do you think? Anyway, let's move to one of our top stories today. Yesterday, we reported that Zimpost is looking at entering into the bureau discharge market. Now, state-owned postal courier and ICT services provider Zimpost says it has set up 15 bureau discharge around the country as it moves to play its part in the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe's financial inclusion drive. Now, this is fantastic news because apart from the 15 that they're initially setting up, They've also got all these post offices around the country, 233, which means that at a post office near you, hopefully in the near future, you'll be able to walk in and do Bureau de Chance services, which is fantastic for our rural folk who are being ripped off, let me put it that way, by middlemen who are going into rural areas and buying the U.S. dollars that they get from the diasporans at really terrible rates. Anyway, uh, to unpack the report, Ndaka Majaka gives us more. Zimpo says it has set up 15 Buru de Change to bring convenience to ordinary Zimbabweans as it diversifies into financial services. Uh, Zimpost is also playing its part in ensuring that uh, the government's policy of uh, um, currencies change service uh, under the brand name Post Bureau de Change. And uh, so far we have about 15 of them uh, spread throughout the country and uh, we are going to roll out more. The move is anticipated to bring convenience to ordinary Zimbabweans who are presently struggling to change foreign exchange. Due to the limited number of changing agents, some locals have resorted to the black market, a practice which is illegal. Zimpost has got 240 post offices. Our desire is to make sure that uh, all those uh, offer period de change services so that people don't have to travel to go and change money and uh, so that people uh, get the convenience of uh, exchanging uh, currencies or switching currencies uh, from uh, their locality or their nearest post office at their convenience. To date, the central bank governor, Dr. John Mangujika, has licensed over 46 Peru de change that are located across the country. This has increased the number of participants in the interbank foreign currency market other than banking institutions. It has also brought convenience to ordinary Zimbabweans. For the Mint, I'm Daka Majaka in Harare. Now we're enjoyed by, joined by Ndaka Majaka, who's going to try and unpack this first more. In Dhaka, very quickly, because we have to move on, but this is brilliant news for our rural folk. I mean, come on. I mean, they, they've been ripped off by middlemen. There's no doubt about it. We've reported all over the press. This is great news. It is great news, especially for the rural folk. I remember when SI 142 of 2019 was introduced, someone told the rural folk that uh, government had said that you need to throw away all your U.S. dollars. So people went there with crazy rates and they ripped them off and they mopped up all the U.S. dollar. But if Zimpost is going to be doing this, they just know you go to the post office, you get a fair rate for your money, then you can change your, your foreign exchange. And of course, it's a great boost for Bureau of the Challenges because I mean, we need more Bureau of the Challenges. And tomorrow on the Mint, we're going to be looking at the exchange control circular that backs up SI 142 that came out yesterday where they do mention view of the challenges more view of the challenges can only be good for Zimbabwe exactly right then now then looking moving on to our next story do you know what's happening in this country well Zimbabweans appear to be drinking less beer now, Zimbabwe Stock Exchange listed beverage manufacturer Delta Beverages says it recorded a subdued performance for the first quarter to June 2019 on the back of changes in the economy arising from the recent fiscal and monetary policies. Delta's company secretary, Alex Makamure, said fundamental changes in the economy had significantly affected the business, highlighting that the availability of foreign currency remained a challenge, disrupting important supplies into the value chain. Listen to these numbers. 
because I, I don't know how many of you drink out there and how many of you don't, but Delta is one of the largest companies in the country. Lager beer volume declined 57% compared to prior year for the quarter. Demand was subdued on account of affordability issues at market players adopted varied pricing models. Makamure said the sparkling beverages volume declined by 79% for the quarter. The business has resumed full production. In Dhaka, uh, even though these numbers are bad, Delta is still a fantastic blue chip company and a company that here on the Mint we would recommend that you go and have a look at to buy. Well, yeah, they're still a really great buy, but it's important for you to note that people are not really drinking less. They've just downgraded. So instead of uh, buying like a BS, people have gone on to buy spirits. So, so, uh, uh, so <laughs> the, the traditional sorghum I like Chibuku, and, by the way. and spirits. So you'll see that uh, Aftis, which is 50.1% owned by Delta, is going to report a, a superb performance for this particular period because what they did is they introduced a new product. It's called uh, Snow White. Oh, yes, it's, yes. A, it's, a, it's a low end gene. It's been wiped off the shelves. Entrance price was about 17, uh, 7, uh, 17 uh, Zim dollars. It's now going for 37 Zim dollars, and you just don't find it on I the don't shelves. Find it. Yeah, so people. Of just downgrading. Well, listen to this. I mean, uh, product supply has been consistent despite the difficulties, this is said by Delta, in, a, in accessing imported packaging materials and services. There are concerns about the supply of agricultural cereals arising from the drought and the recent changes to the marketing policies. However, there is good news. I mean, Delta subsidiary National Breweries PLC Zambia is doing well. They are doing well in Zambia. Uh, the agriculture in Zambia is booming, so obviously National Bre uh, Breweries is doing well. So this could offset uh, the upset uh, be happening in Zimbabwe and cushion Delta against uh, further losses. I mean, you can see the link, can't you? If agriculture is down, uh, beer manufacturers at Delta, for example, they need the agricultural product to make beer. You have to make beer using agricultural products, particularly cereals. So if agriculture is down, Delta has to import the raw materials if they want to make supply. And that's a bit of a problem. I mean, Makamuya also said our product prices have not yet factored in the full impact of the depreciation of the exchange rate. That is a worrying statement because they're implying that possibly prices price will go increases. up. Yes, uh, you know that inflation in July went up to above 170 percent and food inflation is now technically in hyperinflation. So it's only expected that as time goes on, beer prices are also going to go up. All right. Now, are Delta yeah. affected by this legacy debt issue? Have they had any debt that they've moved across to Reserve Bank at one to one? Well, uh, what the RBZ has done is they've ring fenced uh, uh, a facility for Delta to pay international uh, international creditors in, um, in in foreign exchange at a rate of uh, one is to one. When, when and if they get the money. When and if they get the money. So at least that's a good thing for them. They can still get money at one is to one to pay their foreign uh, suppliers. But one of the downers, I suppose, for Delta is this Coca-Cola issue. So explain that. Uh, so, as you may remember, there was that uh, Coca-Cola deal that happened in 2016. The company is presently trading at, uh, uh, under cautionary. But what they're saying is that uh, because of the macroeconomic uh, challenges happening here, fiscal and monetary uh, policies are changing, the, uh, the negotiations have been slow. So that's uh, what um, Mr. Makamura said yesterday. Dr. Majaka, thank you very much. So we're not drinking less beer. We're just not being able to afford it. But it means that Delta volumes are down, but they are up in the Shogun products, uh, Chibuka in particular. And, of course, a little bit on the horizon for them. There are negotiations currently to buy a brewer in South Africa that's going to be focused in the South African market on the Chibuku brand. Anyway, that's it for Delta, but still, I still emphasize, great, great, great company. Go and have a look at it. If you can invest in it in terms of stock markets, put it in your investment portfolio. At least have a look. Anyway, now next story, Nigeria. Nigeria is set to receive 165 million investment from the European Union for the country's renewable energy master plan, which will see the development of several projects. Head of the EU's delegation to Nigeria and the economic community of West Africa States, Ketley Carlson, affirmed the report and said the funds are the union's continued support of the country's efforts to further implement renewable energy in its energy mix. The investment is estimated to improve power access for nearly 90 million people and, of course, contribute towards economic growth, creating jobs through the financing of several youth-led projects in the country's renewable energy sector. The Renewable Energy Master Plan in Nigeria was launched in 2011 and aims to increase renewable energy in the country 10% by 2025. With a share of 2% of, in the total final energy consumption, electricity remains a marginal source of energy in Nigeria. Furthermore, electricity only represents 9% of the household's total energy 
consumption. Electricity consumption from residential and commercial sectors represented 80% of the total electricity demand. The rest is covered by the industrial street lighting and special tariff sectors. The UK, as you know, Boris Johnson was on Tuesday elected the leader of the Conservative Party. And yesterday at lunchtime, he was anointed or appointed. He met the Queen and became the new Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. The question on everyone's lips is, how will Boris Johnson's elevation to the Prime Ministership affect US-UK relations? Well, the Guardian newspaper reports that Boris Johnson has already been dubbed Britain's Trump by the occupant in the Oval Office, who probably sees it as the highest compliment he can give to anyone. Trump and Theresa May started off well. They held hands on the White House lawn, but the relationship soured as soon as she rebuked him over his impromptu investigations in interventions in UK affairs. Trump appears to have forgiven Johnson because in the past, Johnson has actually called Trump a quite stupefying ignorance that makes him, frankly, unfit to hold the office of President of the United States. That all seems to be water under the bridge. Now that he does hold that office, Trump has decided that Johnson has reformed and is now the ally who will deliver Brexit, Brexit where May failed. For now, in the president's eyes, Johnson is, and I quote, tough and he's smart. It is a safe bet that one of the prime minister's first trips overseas will be to Washington to showcase the new transatlantic harmony, which will be built around flattering a president like no one has done before. <laughs> the harder question is whether the special relationship will involve any real convergence on policy. Johnson may have to show the U.S. his true colors on Iran. The U.K., along with other U.S. allies in Europe, have been under sustained mounting pressure from Washington to join his campaign of maximum pressure on Iran. But they have kept faith in the nuclear deal that they signed in 2015. Both Johnson and Trump will talk up the possibilities of a U.S.-U.K. free trade agreement post-Brexit. But the jury is still out by all accounts. Is the special relationship still in place? And is it destined to continue? Well, we think it will. Your comments, please keep them coming in on our Facebook page, Zim Papers TV Network, and our website, ztn.co.zw. Now, please go to our website, because today at 1 o'clock, our live broadcast of Heartbeat, and at 6.30 this afternoon, The Chase, Corruption and Fiscal Transparency. Is Zimbabwe on the right track? That will be sponsored by the U.S. Embassy. That will be at 6.30 this evening. So please don't miss that at 6.30, and, of course, Heartbeat at 1.00 and all the other ZTN news coming out of our newsroom that is on the webpage. Now then, Monks, this is a great story. And it, again, we like telling you stories because we're trying to highlight how entrepreneurs can see an idea and make money out of it. Founder Bernard McCoy was the CEO of LaserMonks.com, an internet retailer that sells discounted printer cartridges and other office supplies. Customers include individuals and churches, along with giants such as Morgan Stanley Research and the U.S. Forest Service. It's a lucrative business. Sales had risen from $2,000 in 2002 to make $2.5 million in 2005. The idea for LaserMonks.com came to Father McCoy one day when his printer ran out of ink. He shopped around for a new ink cartridge but couldn't find one that was reasonably priced. In the beginning, LaserMonks.com consisted of a few monks sitting around with black powder and empty plastic cartridges filling a few orders a day. Today, the monks say they have served more than 50,000 customers and they process 200 to 300 daily orders for a broad range of school and office supplies. I just want to give you a context that ideas can come to any time. The question is, as an entrepreneur, remember, one, one entrepreneur, 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 take action. Get your idea, see if it's a good, look at the market, bring it to, bring it to fruition. Who knows, you could be successful, become a millionaire. Well, that's it for the Mint today. I'm Andy Hodges. Now, uh, please, as I said, keep your comments. Zim Papers TV Network Facebook page and ztn.co.zw. Heartbeat at 1 o'clock, the chase at 6.30. You've got to watch ZTN if you want to watch the best news, ch the best channel in Zimbabwe and I think in Africa. Well, that's it for the Mint today. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I'm Andy Hodges. Have a great day. And remember, you will be safe.